Destruction, sorcerer of death's construction. In the fields of bodies burning, as the war machine keeps turning. Death and hatred to mankind, poisoning their brainwashed minds.
struck the hour Day of judgment God is calling Underneath the war pigs crawling Begging masses for the sin Satan laughing spreads his wings Sabbath. Uh, I promised you I was going to do the Paranoid album. Uh, released in September 1970 in the UK and released in January 1971 in the US. And we're going to do the whole album um, guitar and drums. I have not done any drums yet, but we will. I'm excited. Uh, I just did a sound check last night and this morning, and I decided to get some takes down. Check out the description for more information on the gear I'm using. Um, I don't want to make this video too long because I have a lot of material to cover. This is the, uh, I believe this is the. trying to see what year this particular reissue is not sure but anyway so there it is Black Sabbath's second album Paranoid originally it was supposed to be called War Pigs that's why there's a picture of like a warrior on it like a like a like a soldier but they were not allowed to use the title War Pigs I guess it was kind of like uh a parental advisory kind of thing so they changed it to paranoid um, war pigs was uh, written right after the uh, not long after the first album was recorded and released and during the uh, debut album tour um, they 
kind of wrote the song War Pigs um, through a jam from just playing live and jamming, you know, live. And they kind of just, it kind of came out of a drum solo, um, according to Tony Iommi, from some interviews as I found out. Uh, hearing him talk about how the song War Pigs was written. And in my opinion, I think it kind of came out of uh, possibly maybe out of like Sleeping Village or uh, um, Warning or A Bit of Finger. The, the whole Black Sabbath medley song in the end of the, the last track on the debut album. Because it's a long jam when they played it live and it's in the same key. It's an E. So it's possible it came out of uh, Sleeping Village during the drum solo and guitar solo. This is the um, 2016 reissue of the album Black Sabbath, Paranoid. Um, I got this down in the city, a record store in Philadelphia. This is um, the original 1970 album, Disc 1, and then Disc 2 is the bonus tracks CD. Um, recorded at Region Sound Studios. Majority of the album, I believe, was recorded in June. That's what this says. Region Sound Studios, uh, June 16th and 17th, 1970. Um, I'm assuming it's the same concept as the first album, where the majority of the album was probably recorded live and then in the studio. And then they probably um, did some overdubs on another day or another session. Some cool pictures in here, by the way. If you notice in the end of the song War Pigs, I did. There was like this, uh, like you hear on the original studio version, you hear like this tape effect where it speeds up. Um, I'm actually using a, uh, at that part, I actually used a uh, Boss PS6 Harmonist pedal on the uh, super bend setting I think it's on um, octave two or three so it's so whatever you play I, I forget what setting it's on it's either on octave up two or octave up three where it's uh, playing either two or three octaves above whatever note or chord you play when you step on it and I adjust the the balance um, so that it kind of matched the tempo and the timing. Um, by the way, I also recorded this in one take. This was my first take, so hopefully it came out good. Uh, they're never perfect, but I felt this was a pretty darn good take. These are a lot of different single covers released in different parts of the world for uh, singles taken from the Paranoid album. Some cool pictures. Some of these pictures I've never seen before. Again, uh, this album was recorded um, at Regent Sound Studios, which is a was actually a music store upstairs, and it was a small studio, I guess, in the basement. A um, lot of pictures that I've I've showed I've showed you guys before of Regent Sound Studios and some famous pictures taken from the sessions. If you notice, uh, Tony Iommi. In the photos that we have at Region Sound during the Paranoid session, he was using that three pickup white uh, Gibson SG Custom or Gibson Les Paul Custom or SG Les Paul Custom, however you want to look at it. Depends on the um, 
how far the back the guitar was dated back, whether it was an SG or a Les Paul. It's hard to see what it says on the plate above the pickup or on the truss rod cover. But from the photos I've seen, it looks like it's just an SG Custom. So it was probably a late uh, 63. I think 63, they started calling them SGs. Or like a late 62. Or it could have been like a, like a mid-60. I, I have a feeling it's like a, 60, a late 63, right when they took the name Les Paul off. It's called an SG. But uh, the first half of this project I'm doing, I'm going to use the red SG with the P90s to replicate the sound of uh, the monkey SG. There's not any photos of Tony playing the Monkey SG during this session. Not that I'm aware of. Um, so we're going to do side one or the original album version with the Red, uh, red SG. This one I have here. And then we're going to do the bonus content with the uh, white SG that I have. I'm also using uh, my Paranoid book as a reference. So got this, the uh, Black Sabbath '75 '76 compilation album. We sold our soul for rock. We sold our soul for rock and roll. It's also the tab tablature book. Different books are written um, a little bit differently for the song. Some of them are more accurate than others. Some of them uh, they're just straight up wrong, and you have to watch the footage. Or see pictures to figure out what they're actually doing. Also use the Anthology Black Sad Tablature book as a reference. This one is probably my least favorite um, score book of the songs. Written out tablature. There's a lot of mistakes in this one, but it's a pretty cool book. It's written out a little bit different. And then for this video, since this is our first song we're doing, hopefully this video came out good, but I'm doing an unboxing of the, uh, I just picked this up, it's my early Christmas gift, of um, Black Sabbath Paranoid Album, it's the Super Deluxe Edition, came out 2020. It's one of my favorite albums, so I mean like, by Black, it's probably the best, or my favorite album by Black Sabbath. Probably for many others, pretty for obvious reasons, but... I wanted to get the box set, so this you're the first to see this. So I'm doing the I'm first time doing an unboxing video. <laughs> Check it out. I always keep the stickers. This thing's like a VHS box set. All I did was cut the top off just so it saved time in the video, but I didn't even open this yet, so here we go. There's nothing broken here. Cool box. All right. Try to make these videos a little exciting. Looks like this comes off too. It's just kind of weird, but. So in the box set, 
it's the uh, and there's uh, four CDs. There's the original 2012 remix or remaster, not remix, but the 2012 remaster of the 1970 and 71 album uh, Paranoid, which has been remastered. This is a 2012 remaster, um, so it's probably uh, might be a little better sounding. I don't know. Um, and then the second disc is the Quadraphonic Mix in Stereo, which was remixed by some guy named Mike Butcher um, in 1974. Uh, it was at Morgan Studios. So it was released, it was previously unreleased, um, but it was remixed on November 22nd, 1973. And I guess it was completed in 74. So basically, they just took the original album and they EQ'd it maybe a little bit differently, uh, added some studio effects to make it sound a little differently, but it's the same takes that we all know and, and heard, but it's it's just re, it's just mixed a little bit differently. That's really kind of a, a rough um, crash course of uh, a quadraphonic remix. That's really what that is. So it was remixed, again, on November 22nd, 1973. And I guess it was completed in 74. Previously unreleased, though. So they probably didn't release it for a lot of reasons. Probably because they didn't want to mess with the original sound. But they also wanted to have something where collectors like myself would want to have someday. Um, but it's like, you can't really go to a store and just get a quadraphonic remix of like any album it's kind of like it's only certain albums where um um the producers did it for certain albums for certain bands and they're only released in special edition stuff for paranoid for example but it's all the same tracks uh disc three. Oh, by the way and the quadraphonic mix was done at Morgan Studios, which is a very famous studio. A lot of bands played there at Morgan Studios. Like Sabbath, uh, Blind Faith, I think Cream played there, maybe Led Zeppelin, Dretho Toll. I'm pretty sure Dretho Toll, for a fact, played at Morgan Studios. I believe it's somewhere in, in England or the UK. Uh, disc 3, is, uh, which I already heard, um, is the um, Live in Muntrex, 1970, on August 31st. And Montrex is in Switzerland, and it's the casino that burnt down when Frank Zappa and the Mothers were playing. And across the water um, was where Deep Purple was recording Machine Head sometime in uh, December 71, late 71, early 72. Um, and that's what made them write the song Smoke Under the Water. So everything kind of intertwingles with all these rock bands. But the Montrex Casino, before it burnt down, was a pretty hot venue where a lot of bands played at. Um, and again, inspired Deep Purple to write Smoke on the Water after it burnt down. They wrote it as it was burning down. And Frank Zappa and the Mothers, Frank Zappa's band was playing there at that night. And then Disc 4 is live in the Brussels, 1970. Um, in Belgium on December 3rd, 1970. Or, I'm sorry, October 19, October 3rd, 1970. The Montrex show is August 31st, 1970. I never heard the Brussels show. So we are going to do, I'm going to try to do, uh, well, I'm not try, I'm just now. I'm going to do the, um, there's a lot of cool stuff in here. I'm going to do those three shows, the Montrex, um, the Brussels show, drums and guitar, and I'm going to try to do the Fillmore West. I have some stuff from the Fillmore West show in November 1970. So let's check out the book. This video might be a little long, but I just kind of wanted to show off this cool box set. I think this is the... Oh, here we go. Some... These photos are awesome. I mean, these are the photos at Regent Sound we've talked about before. 
is the white SG. Okay, super deluxe. And then, uh, there you go, there's Ozzy writing War Pigs on the bottom there, 1970. Some cool pictures in here. These are the pictures I was talking about. Region Sound Studio. This is probably when War Pigs was recorded. This is June 1970. Also, if you look in the background, it looks like besides the SGA we know that we talked about, uh, you see Tony and Geezer's Laney supergroups, but you also see it looks like a Vox amp. It looks like a Vox AC30, which is uh, what the Beatles recorded everything, almost everything on. And I'm wondering if that's just sitting there, if that's somebody else's amp, or if that Vox amp was actually being used on some of the tracks, some of the takes. Um, not sure. A lot of cool pictures. Trying to go as fast as I can. There's a lot of stuff here. Different import copies, newspaper articles. I'll probably read this book at one point to see, find some more information. So it looks like a lot of a lot of newspaper articles. A lot of newspaper articles, different pictures, and pretty cool. Black Sabbath taking over the world. Sabbath ban on singles. Son of a gun. A lot of people didn't like Sabbath when they came out, especially the record company, because everyone thought they were anti-Jesus. But it was all kind of a bunch of nonsense. Um, German Club, 1970. Okay. I always like this uh, this photo here. This one on the... I guess it would be your right. Taking the uh, Maple Durham photo from the debut album and it has a paranoid logo on top Sabbath flashing out on screaming kids whatever that's about there you goes uh, Vertigo's version of paranoid different colors on the logos Really, really cool photo. I know some of this I've never seen before. Different, uh, again, a lot of them are different singles. This is a South African LP by Vertigo Records. This looks like a tape reel. Probably the original for Paranoid. It looks like, it, yeah, it's definitely a tape reel. Probably taken from Regent Sound. There you go, the quadraphonic disc. It's the quadra quadraphonic LP disc. That's what that cover looked like. Again, is a special. Again, it's a special remix of um, of the album. Here's some of the paperwork. From uh, the sessions, master tape. Something about Island Studios. Uh, at one point, it was taken to Island Studios to sessions. Uh, Morgan Studios. Uh, Trident 
Studios. There's an additional, there's more pictures, the singles. This is a really neat thing to have if you're a Black Sabbath fan, these box sets. They are a little pricey, but if it's something special to you, especially if you're somebody like me, if you're going to be doing a project and learning the songs and really dissecting everything, I suggest buying something like this if you're a diehard uh, rock guy like myself. This is like the Bible to me. Side picture. And then there's uh, Bill Ward and Geezer Butler. That kit right there, that's the Ludwig kit. Um, the Grey Ripple Ludwig kit. This was also, again, not to get too much into the drums yet, but this was the. Uh, Last album with the Ludwig kit. What is this? I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is the 1971 tour book. I guess so if you want to do a concert, they would give you this. It's like a program. That's what it looks like to me, but it's a very small one. Ozzy. So brace yourself because you're going to see these pictures a million times throughout this series. Super duper cool. Here's the uh, poster. Yeah, this thing's pretty cool. Ooh, yeah, got a poster for my room now. I always like this picture. Slowly do this without ripping it. This is a decent sized poster too. Stand that front of. I always thought it was a church. I don't think it is. I think it's a, ma a mausoleum, I think, where they had dead bodies in. Surprisingly easy. 